Christians escalate harassment of pagan festivals. During Witch Fest, held annually in mid-July, dozens of aggressive Christian preachers stormed into the gathering of pagans and witches celebrating their community. Witch Fest is a nonprofit organization that raises funds for various pagan groups and strengthens community bonds. Some members of conservative Christian groups and street preachers always make it into pagan celebrations. Still, their numbers were far larger this year than expected, with around 30 evangelists showing up. The organizer of Witchfest USA, Star Ravenhawk, was extremely upset by the disruptions. A Christian group gathered on a street corner near one of the workshop stalls around 10 a.m., later entering the event space itself. Many vendors left early feeling threatened. The group began preaching to the attendees to rectify their ways. Ravenhawk called the police, but according to her, the cops did nothing. She said, the officers treated us as if we were invading the Christians' space, as if they had more rights than we do. Ravenhawk said that the people that came this year were not just protesting, adding, they are collectively at war with us. They made that clear. Attendees at an Atlanta Mystic South Conference were also harassed similarly on the same weekend as this year's Witch Fest. Wait, can you do a, um, ex what happened exactly? Can you okay, let me pull up my sources just a second. So basically, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, where is it? Okay. Um, so a lot of no. pagan events are usually held outside because one you know they are into the earth <laughs> earthy things like that so they try to do them in outdoor spaces and this oftentimes it allows for a lot of harassment to occur um the christian they also have a lot of uh, my my picture of pagan events what is like lots of flowers mm -hmm. lots of sun a crystals. summery event crystals and psych psychedelics right maybe and and lots of sex. Maybe. That was my, that used to be, I had, I used to have a huge, very positive Im, um, image of what pagan festivals were like until this movie came out called uh, Midsummer. Midsummer? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mid <laughs> but that's, that's like a dramatized. I know, but it just ruined it. Now it's like all of the things I said summer, flowers, Lots of sex, um, psychedelics, and murder. Okay, a lot of murder, apparently. Okay, you're going to want a fictional thriller? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, okay I have no words. Okay. But let's, let's get into what happened at this real-life event, not what happened in a fictional, fictional movie. Okay. <laughs> a, a Christian group took up a prominent position on one street corner as the festival began at 10 a.m., then began talking to attendees and preaching into amplification devices. Among them, uh, Ravenhawk said she recognized members of the New York City chapter of the Christian Forgiveness Ministries, a Toronto organization that sent visitors before. After her security team asked the preachers to leave, Ravenhawk uh, called the police as she had done in past years. But for the first time, cops did nothing, she said. The Christians say no one is being bothered, Ravenhawk was reportedly told by the officers. So the 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 Christians are saying, oh, no one's bothered by us. In the past years, officers would relocate the preachers to the far side of Astor Place, where they would continue without use of the speakers, which would require a permit. This year, the Christian groups were allowed to remain at the festival with their sound amplification. According to Ravenhawk, the officers said the preaching was freedom of speech. It is unclear whether the group had permits. So they're not allowed to use bullhorns and microphones and all this stuff unless they had a permit. And so usually that's how these things would get shut down is basically on that technicality. But this year they were allowed to keep doing that stuff, even though it's completely unclear whether they actually had the permitted necessary to do something like that. One attendee said when the police had the opportunity to downgrade things by possibly escorting the troublemakers off the areas, the t they, t they chose not to deescalate. Um, then 
when the protesters moved the workshop tent away from the corner near the preachers, the Christian groups followed. At a certain point, the protesters were not only in the surroundings in the corners of the events with microphones and banners, but inside it, said Leifer, whose class had to be canceled due to the preachers. And she's, then he replied, we are not publicly protesting at their churches on a Sunday. You should. <laughs> Why not? Like, find their churches. Go, like, yeah. Um, I mean, why he's are just they... trying to speak to how... Yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Asymmetrical the relationship is. Why are they doing this, the Christians? They're trying to save them? Or yeah, they're it's... trying to say that, you know, you need to save your immortal soul. You're doing things that are horrible. You need to return to the one why? who created you, you know. Why not just, like, I don't know show your boobs or something that scares them up or go kiss in front of them <laughs> like yeah why don't you just like have like men kissing men girls kissing girls flash your boobs well flash i don't your... think that's more of a pride a, a pride parade kind of thing I it don't works know. for them it works for them <laughs> it works for you <laughs> it's a christian weakness <laughs> it's their achilles heels like sexy stuff like okay just try it's kind of weird. I don't know why this is happening, why it's escalating nowadays. I think I think it's like a culture war kind of thing. Like culture war of like QAnon and Satanism and all this stuff. I think people are more mobilized against things that they see as pagan and yeah. anti-Christian because they think it's satanic and bringing down the country or something. That's my own speculation. What do you think? Yeah. It's also taking the heat off of us atheists with all this pagan stuff and satanic stuff. Like the Christians, are like atheists seem a lot milder when you have like people just worshiping the Satan, you know, Satan left and right, literally bringing back pagan. Paganism is growing, by the way, in the United States, like really growing, like to the point where uh, debates online are now happening with pagans. Like that's how. Like it used to be debates with atheists, Muslims, Christians, deists, um, and like pagans were like, what? Like they were just like a fringe of a fringe, uh, like a small minority of people that we thought that they just like, I don't know, li light fire and just dance around it. But now they're actually so serious that they're showing up in debates, online YouTube debates. And they're like, so you believe in Odin? And they're like, yeah like like real like like it's like for real like odin like you believe odin is real i'm like yeah and they're like they're serious i'm like okay <laughs> sure i mean it's not as it's not more ridiculous than islam or christianity so why sure why not <laughs> i was like like they literally talk about going to Valhalla and stuff like they believe it's a real place and they oh, wow yeah, it's, it's 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 growing. I don't know if people realize. Wait, how, do, doesn't how, that mean that they need to go essentially wage jihad to get into Valhalla? They, yeah, but they have interpret. They're, they're doing the Islamic thing on it. They like rereading the scripture, um, and coming up with new interpretations of what this means. Now is it an, inter, an interpersonal and inner jihad? I don't know what it is, <laughs> but no. Like for example, I saw like there's some really disgusting things in like. You know about ragnarok and stuff like that and i was listening to their debates and i was like oh no that's like there's no proof that that was part of our religion that's what christians brought to our religion i'm like oh my god you sound like muslims mm -hmm. and hindus and christian like <laughs> like the, the problematic they're not you know how like muslims say like that oh, one, the they might actually have a point though i know i know but it's like it just sounds so, so like i'm not saying they're right or wrong but it's just so interesting to hear they have defense. They, they're coming up with defenses about the problematic parts of, I don't know, Ragnarok or things mm. about the Nordic religions. It's interesting. By the way, most of the pagans that are participating in debates are uh, into Nordic. Like, I haven't seen, like, what kind of pagans are these? I don't know. Yeah, no. There's so many different yeah. kinds. Yeah, it's kind of unfair that we call them all pagan. Like, all, like, the pagans themselves are referring to themselves as pagan, which shows how simplistic their mind, how Abra Abrahamic mindset 
they have an Abrahamic mindset about their own I don't religion. Know if that's fair. I think it's just because they've been given that umbrella label, now it's convenient to organize under that. I don't it's because they're in a monotheistic Abrahamic hegemony. Right. Okay, sure, fine. But like pagan is like so many different re religions that are as related to each other as Christianity or Islam is to those pagan religions. So to yeah. just pit everything that is not Abrahamic and not Hindu as well and to call it all pagan. I mean, technically, they used to call Hindus pagans as well, right? But now anything, all of them I together, like, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Egyptian religions and Nordic religions, they're like so far apart and like they're both pagan all of a sudden. So it doesn't matter. Afro-Caribbean religions. Yeah, 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 you're right. All pagan, all pagan. Mm -hmm. This is so so Abrahamic centric to think about everything that is not you as pagan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean to be um, fair, they did take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just uh, end on this comment, which is from Forever Stormy. She's saying Armin's go-to solution to everything is to whip out the junk. I've never lived, I never whipped out the junk at this. At least not in the show. We don't know what happens after the stream is over. <laughs> like, maybe like, someone's harassing you pull out your wait, no wait where, where, where did this happen where we're still alive i'm sure <laughs> i i'm pretty sure i ended this stream i'm pretty sure i ended the stream when we did then I did. <laughs> right sis right i did <laughs> i think we would have i think youtube would have informed us otherwise <laughs> 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 oh my okay. gosh get my best-selling book why there is no god for free click on the link for it in the description